I want to speak today about rebuking the storm. It's about going on a voyage together away from fear of the great storm to faith in our great Lord over the storm. And our reading, our story is taken from one of the Gospels of Jesus' life, according to Mark in chapter 4. It was just meant to be another day, another ordinary week, another ordinary month. There was a visit planned later in the week with lots of exciting things to do. But then how quickly things change. At least that's what happened for the disciples that evening as they get in the boat to cross those familiar waters. How quickly things change. Before they know it, they find themselves cast in the midst of a storm and even a storm that they've not seen before. Remember for the disciples, despite their youthful age, they were experienced fishermen. They knew these waters, but even for them, this was uncharted waters. The Sea of Galilee is not much bigger than this island. But the disciples find themselves experiencing something like even they've not seen before. It's not just the great storm, it's the speed of the great storm. And they find themselves catapulted around this boat, engulfed in fear and trembling and water. As someone said to me of a medic he'd spoken to recently of this great storm. I've been to war twice and I was scared. Now I'm terrified. No more feeling like we're on the aircraft carrier of indestructibility. Now we find ourselves amidst the elements on a fishing boat, no bigger than eight metres by two. And the wind and the waves of the great storm rock us about like we'd never seen before. At risk of the elements, we, like the disciples, cry out in fear and trembling at the great storm. Jesus, meanwhile, we read, is asleep on a cushion at the back of the boat. You know, whenever people tell me that the Gospels are all made up, I just think of those little attention to details like the asleep on a cushion that tell me they cannot be. We find Jesus is a walker, probably not gently. Don't you care, Jesus? We're drowning. The question we can maybe understand. It may be a legitimate question we may feel, but it's a question that reveals where our fear truly is. Maybe we feel we have to wake Jesus up this morning. Don't you care, Jesus? We're drowning. Don't you care what's happening to us? Well, I have news for you. He's not asleep and he cares. Jesus opens his mouth and speaks to the storm. He rebukes the wind as if it were an animate being and throws off the waves as if they're some unruly heckler. Be still. Shut up. The result is immediate. Not only does the wind cease, the sea is calm. Just think about that for a moment. Not only does the wind cease, the sea is calm. We live in an island. You know, we're used to seeing storms. We're used to seeing some, some great storms and the winds blowing. But even when the winds have stopped, we're still used to seeing the waves going. But all we read here is there's a great calm. The great calm of motionless death. Jesus then speaks to his followers. Why are you afraid? Have you not yet faith? Two questions in the midst of the storm we all need to find, we all, we all face that we clearly need to answer. Why are we afraid? Have we not faith? The disciples there know what's exactly happened. It's, this storm didn't stop naturally. It's because of the authority 
of Jesus that he has muzzled the storm. Now perhaps in the great storm we find ourselves, like the disciples found that day, it's the time to shift out of reverse gear and into fifth gear. Away from a fear in the great storm to being filled with the great awe of the Lord over the storm. Who then is this Jesus that even the wind and the waves obey him? This is the question of faith. There are different kinds of fear. The Bible will tell us that many types of fear are bad. But one type of fear is good. The wisdom writers in the Bible will tell us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This is what it means to be filled with awe of, with, of our great Lord. This is the question of faith. To get back in the boat amidst the storm we find ourselves in and practice faith in our great Lord over the storm, over fear of the great storm, and rebuke the great storm in the name of our great Lord. What, how, why? The so-called golden circle or golden ratio of questions that we often we find in life are critical to helping us understand it. And perhaps... They're helpful to us in understanding the great storm we find ourselves in. Why? Why do we rebuke the great storm? Remember Jesus' questions to his disciples. Why are you fearful? Have you not yet faith? There was clearly an expectancy that, that Jesus thought his disciples together could rebuke the great storm. How? How to rebuke the great storm? Well, those questions that Jesus asked his disciples that day. Why are you fearful? Have you not yet faith? You know, they're very similar to questions that Jesus would ask of people in other similar occasions. When he would say we need to repent and believe. The word repent means to change one's mindset or worldview. The word believe means to trust and act accordingly. You know, that is what Jesus is looking for us to do now. How we rebuke the great storm is by changing our mindset and having a bigger vision of Jesus. And what to do? Well, let me leave you with, with four thoughts as we begin, as I end. Firstly, that we need to perhaps come and say sorry to our great Lord. For when we've lived our lives, so many, so much of our lives without reference to him, not just in this great storm, but all through our lives. Secondly, we need to come and fill our minds with a bigger vision of Jesus. You know, for many of us, but not all, paradoxically in this great storm, we have more time than ever to fill our souls with our great Lord, to read, to sing, to pray, to journal, to watch, to fill our hearts and minds up with him. Thirdly, we need to, to come together to rebuke the great storm, because clearly Jesus expected his disciples to be able to do it, but to do it together. And fourthly, then we need to practice faith in our great Lord. And get back into the boat amidst the great storm that we find ourselves and practice faith in our great Lord over fear in the great storm and rebuke the great storm in the authority of our great Lord. Shall we pray? Living Jesus, our great Lord, who is with us always. Help us to practice faith in you, our great Lord, over fear of the great storm. May we speak and rebuke the great storm in the name of Jesus Christ, 
who conquered every great storm. Amen.